29, but you can go 31. You can go over 30 if you yeah. like just one or two, but you really want to make sure that it's the exact, and then you want to get any extra. You see how she's taking the iodine off? You have to go from the center all the way out using and sterile. And you want to immediately want to cover that area before you begin the reaction. So as you see, we've got a sterile tiny use needle here. This is a 17 gauge, nice and small. <laughs> Smaller than what we used to use. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're about to begin. And as we start, really the whole process of this is pretty simple for the donor. The machine does most of the work. And so it's going to start, it's going to go through um, an average donation goes between 8 to 12 cycles. It will take about 50 minutes. Some people are a little shorter, some can take a little longer. In this case, we're just going to give you an example of what it would take to actually start the process of collecting plasma and what the machine actually does with this and how it separates it. Okay, oh, here you're ready. I know. Okay, so I'm going to go up just a little higher here. Okay, go ahead. Squeeze it, little squeeze it, squeeze it. Okay, so right now you're going to move the cap, remove that, and you're going to go back to your area. Yeah, at this point, relax your neck completely, and you want to lower your pressure down to 40. Seriously, I call my people sharpshooters. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very, very good for the bottoms. Of course, so am I. <laughs> Just help me. Mm -hmm. Keep that area very sterile so you can keep that covered at all times. And at this point, you're just going to make a connection between until the reservoir is, what, about three-quarters full? Yeah, and you guys will see. You'll, you'll be able to see it. It's really cranky. Yeah, and you'll notice that when it starts out, it's kind of slow, and it has to just start revving up. And she's going at top speed with no difficulties. You guys can get close if you want to look at it. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll just kind yeah, of come down here. Yeah, come on over here because this is fun. Where do the bubbles? Little bubbles. Yeah, 
bubbles, we we'll call it champagne. And that goes all into here. If the machine detects any air in this main line, it lets us know. So we don't ever have a problem with, you know, the old myth of air right. and all that kind of stuff. We can purge the air from the line. Yeah, if, if there's a little air bubble in here, this right here is just nothing but going into the bottle. That's a good thing. And another thing, we can tell what a person eats by their plasma. If they have prime rib, McDonald's, or a nice healthy vegetarian <laughs> diet. This will be cloudy. It's really cloudy if it's full of lipids, which is fats. Yeah. Or actually, yours look pretty good. I know it. Nice and clear like this. Um, some people, their plasma is a darker yellow. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Certain medications might give it a green color to it, but other than that. Okay, so the reservoir is filled up. Here, these are all the concentrated um, cells right here. The now the machines will show over to the return portion of the cycle. So right here. This is where I really need to make sure that the donor's arm in this area is feeling okay. Because now it's all going back in. Can that feel okay? Right. If it wasn't feeling okay and things weren't going well, this would start, all the blood would it'd be it'd call it infiltrating. And it would be going, trying to go in the vein, but all around the vein as well. She'd be saying, ouch, and I'd be pushing the stop button. <laughs> and so... Problems can happen every once in a while, but for the most part, they run pretty smooth. So as you see, the contents of the reservoir are all empty, slowly empty, and going right back in. So it's on the draw, when it's pulling out the whole blood, is when this is detecting the cells, which is in here, separates the plasma, which goes into the plasma line, right down into the bottle. And this is what the donor is getting compensated for, and this is what we use to solve research for on allergies and on immune diseases. So what's the cost of a machine like this? Um, about $25,000 to $30,000. Yeah. Okay. And maintenance-wise? Maintenance-wise, they have to... You feeling okay? Yeah. Fine. They have to be maintenance on a routine basis, not only daily, but monthly, and right. then yearly. And there's a cost for also doing that. Oh my God, it's getting tight. Presently, we are able to rent these. Okay. Yeah. Um, and these, the setup that she just put on, those are, how much do they run for? Um, the whole, everything together is about $20. So it costs us $20 just in supplies every time somebody comes in here. And sometimes these, um, Sometimes the kits that they install here, um, when it goes through its check, they're defective, and so we can't use them. And I don't know if we ever get reimbursed for those, do we? We haven't had a whole bunch, but I know it costs a lot of money for that. So now it's drawing again. Is it drawing now? Okay. So this will continue to draw and return until the machine says, oh, there's 880 milliliters of plasma in that bottle. Can you see the plasma down there now? Yeah. And it makes Good. a really cool sound when it's done. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 It's quite triumphant. <laughs> 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 and then it goes right into the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Very cool machine, actually. And it's on the draw here. You'll notice that with more of the little bubbles here, but that's where the plasma is being pushed through from the filter into that line.